Welcome into week 14 edition of Band of Betters, a sports betting show for you, sports fans looking to be more data driven. Brad Kronthal here with my brother Spencer Kronthal of Alloy Sports, and we cannot wait for the upcoming week of football. A lot to unpack in this quick show, but Spencer, how are you feeling today? I'm doing good. Great, great start to this week. As we approach another awesome week of NFL football, got some big games to recap, some exciting bets to uh, talk about this upcoming week. Absolutely. So let's start with our opening act, our favorite moment from week 13. Spencer, kick it off. I'm keying in on the defense, and I'm looking at San Francisco. I mean, talk about a defensive performance that basically halted the red-hot Miami Dolphins and Tua to talk of a low-lead offense right in their tracks. I'm keying in on Nick Bosa as the star of the week. Three more sacks to add to his league-leading total. He's had a sack now at least in six straight games. Nick Bosa, the San Francisco defense, they're looking unstoppable right now. And think about it, they just beat one of the hottest teams in the league with a backup quarterback in Brock Purdy leading the way. San Fran showing no signs of slowing down. It doesn't really matter at this point who's playing at quarterback. Absolutely. Uh, maybe a Baker Mayfield in the fold for San Francisco. We'll see. Tough draw there. But everything I've heard is Kyle Shanahan loving Brock Purdy. And it's all dependent upon the run and short passing game for them. So, Defense is there. Uh, We'll see how this moves forward, but definitely an intriguing development in San Francisco. My favorite moment, well, not favorite because I lost a little bit of money on it, but the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this is, you know, the final gut punch to me that I can finally say this team is probably going to win the division. Uh, I thought they would be slipping up at different points of the year. Um, Wanted to see how battle-tested they'd be, but to this point, they've been really unstoppable. And to beat a really tough Tennessee team with a good running game, Decent defense, good coaching, and just blow them out at this point in the year. Um, really impressive. Uh, hats off to Jalen Hurts, Nick Sirianni. Hurts, 29-39, 380 passing yards, three touchdowns. And gosh, A.J. Brown, he looks good in that green and black, doesn't he? He just looks like – he reminds me of the T.O. back when he played Mc, with McNabb in the early 2000s. I mean, he's been that dominant for the Eagles. He got, had a 41-yard 40, touchdown pass nullified. The next play, they throw it back to A.J., <laughs> and he makes good on that touchdown. Really incredible team that, you know, I'm finally ready to fully hop on the bandwagon. Um, and if you had an Eagles futures bet early in the year to win the NFC East, good for you. I mean, I'm not just looking at the NFC East. I'm looking at the NFC, and I'm looking at maybe even the Super Bowl this year. This Eagles team, we're talking about the offense. They held Derrick Henry to 30 yards rushing. I mean, Henry hasn't had the best, you know, recent games going on, but to hold the NFL's best running back over the past several seasons to 30 yards, not even talking about what the offense was able to do, is incredible. And just going off the T.O. comparison, I think Devontae Smith's a little better of a second target than Freddie Mitchell was back in the day. So this Eagles offense really is exciting, but don't be sleeping on the defense either. No, absolutely. And it seems like someone new every week can come and, help Philly's offense, whether it's Miles Sanders, who really didn't do much. He had 24 uh, rushing yards, but A.J. Brown again, eight receptions, 119 yards, two touchdowns. This week, Devontae Smith broke out as well with over 100 yards receiving. Um, 11-1. and one. Need not say more for that. Um, but want to continue this, this talk of the Eagles, and I'm going to pull up right now the current MVP odds um, from Fandle. I think entering Sunday, Mahomes had a bit of a wider lead. Now he's at plus money. He wasn't minus money. Almost even now between Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts. Chiefs losing to the Bengals. Eagles obviously continue their dominance. I was surprised entering this week that Hurts wasn't higher up and Mahomes had such a overall lead on him considering, you know, the Chiefs are the Chiefs. They've been good and people like that recency feeling. I would definitely feel a lot more comfortable at this point if if the Eagles win their division to put my money on Jalen Hurts and I would Mahomes because Mahomes has been there and done that. And again, I think people like voting for that newer guy who just seems to be dominant. They're the best team in football. He's been incredible all year. Surprised at all that he's still second in the running right now when it comes to the odds. You know, I think Mahomes is, you know, if anyone deserves to be that number one spot, it is Mahomes. I love I love Hurts, but Mahomes has earned the right to be there. I would personally vote for Hurts right now. I mean, taking this team to be where they are, we know what Kansas City is. They're an absolute juggernaut, and it's less of a – it's no knock on Mahomes. It's more of a, 
a statement of what Hertz has been able to do. The way I see it, I see the shift potentially coming in a couple weeks where Philly's going on the road at Dallas. That, I think, is going to be the make-or-break game where if Jalen Hurts and this Philly offense lights up the Dallas defense, I think you've got your But why? They're 11-1. and one. If they lo- Even if they lose to Dallas and Hurts doesn't play that well, they're 11-2. and two. The Chiefs have three losses. You know, And look at the divisional comparisons. The well, NFC East has been the best division in football. And Hurts is just... Has, he has my vote. He has, he has my vote right now. But when I look at voters, they're looking for that aha moment. They want that big shift, that, that Heisman moment, we'll call it. And, you know, I see that coming in a couple of weeks. I think Hurts already deserves it. His numbers are ridiculous. The team is 11-1, and one, like you said. But he'll have the opportunity to truly win over everybody when you're going up against Dallas on Fox's Game of the Week, you know, 425 Eastern. That's going to be the moment where I think he takes this thing and the odds completely shift if they go out and win that game strongly. Could be. But, but right I, now, I, 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 agree I, I think you. it's great value right now because I think it is Hurts. I agree with you. Uh, I think so, too. I'm just surprised that he's not in the overall lead, which gives you a great opportunity to get in the market. <laughs> you know, right now he's at plus 150. Uh, if you want him at plus money before he dominates, if you see that coming in the near future, Now's a good time to hop in that market and throw a futures bet on Jalen Hurts. Um, let's go to our receipts from last week, Spencer. Um, pretty even week overall. Start with you. I'll throw up your uh, your games that you bet last week, and you can kind of walk us through how it went for you. Yeah, I'll take the uh, two, two and three on on the week, 25 and 24 overall now. So last couple of weeks of uh, – Brought, brought a lot of, you know, pretty poor performance, which I'm not too excited about. But again, looking to play the long game. I had three games where luckily I just took the spread, kept my money the same. Whether it's a blowout or it's close, it doesn't matter. I got blown out on three games. But where I'm looking is I saw a lot of value with Pittsburgh and New Orleans. Obviously, New Orleans was looking like a win until, until Mr. Brady and co. decided to lay up two touchdowns on them at the end of the fourth. So, And yeah. tell the, oh, yeah. the viewers of your real record again because – we need 25 and 24. <laughs> All right. I'm going to go to, uh, to mine. And again, yeah, I saw some aggression this week. It was pretty even between the favorites and dogs. So I got in on Monday with saints and, you know, felt semi-confident just cause the saints have blown by, uh, the bucks as of late. But they held their own again. Tom Brady coming down at the very end with three seconds left, scoring that game-winning touchdown. Didn't matter. Wasn't a sweat. Saints covered there. I got in early in Kansas City, and this is one where I, I kind of played both sides. I had Kansas City uh, against the spread, but then I had Cincinnati on a teaser bet, and um, the teaser ended up losing because of Tennessee. But – you know, like Kansas City going there, kind of having redemption for last year. It didn't happen. Cincinnati's legit. Giants, commanders, uh, tie games, so that one hit. And then New England, a big disappointment last Thursday. So two and two week is what it is. Um, overall, I can't see my overall record here. Um, let's see. Net positive. Don't see my overall uh, record on this page, but. I think I'm like 31 and 26 this year. So, you know, one thing I want to talk about today is as we start rolling on these bets and gets later in the year and you see some blowouts are a really good opportunity for you to get in if you're not feeling that confident in a certain game or two. Um, And that would be with a teaser bet. So what a teaser bet is, is essentially a parlay where you have to add at least two plus games, but you can divvy up the money you know, however you want when it comes to points. You can add or or subtract six points depending on the team you're betting on. So let's say you like an underdog. So last week, I like Cincinnati. Uh, They were at plus three, plus two and a half. Um, I had a 10-point teaser, pushed them all the way down to 12 and a half. If you feel good about a team but not great and you have a few of those in mind, put them in a teaser bet. It gives you all those more points. The odds come down, but then they they, they do boost up a bit because it does become a parlay, Um, and that's how that works. So – Really interesting style of betting. Uh, gives you a little more confidence, but again, it is a parlay, so they all do have to hit for you to cash out. Uh, but it is, again, if you feel confident in three games, you want to give yourself more confidence and more points, that's a teaser bet. 
Do you have any teaser bets in mind, Spencer? No, I do not, which is why I didn't touch it. One thing I try to avoid is I try to avoid the parlay bets. So I, I like to bet one game at a time. I know teasers can give you the better odds, but again, I try to stay away from parlays for the most part. Yeah, it, it's a new, it's a different way of betting, a different approach. Um, I know for me last week, there were a few games where I wanted some extra points on Thanksgiving. It worked out where it was the Giants and the Lions didn't need the extra points, but it gave you that extra comfort. I think I gave myself six more points. So different way of betting. Again, it's a parlay, but it's a little more accurate um, from a data perspective than a parlay because, again, you're giving yourself good odds to start with the data, and then you're just boosting those odds um, even more so in your favor, but you do need them all to hit. So this takes us to our weekly forecast. Upcoming games we like, strategies we like, systems we built. Spencer, lead us off. What's a system that you built recently that you're looking for for week 14? Yeah, so, you know, I'm I'm looking at a couple different ones. I'm looking, you know, at my drive extender strategy right now. And, and, you know, one thing I liked is also the defensive strategy you've been putting together over the past couple of weeks. You could see it in our content, you know, defensive pressures. But for my drive extender strategy, overall, I'm looking to play the longer game. The last couple of weeks hasn't been the most successful but I'm looking to stick with it. I've got Baltimore covering at Pittsburgh plus three and Tampa Bay covering at San Francisco. I see, you know, some opportunity here. I think the San Fran game is going to be interesting. I'm pretty confident in Baltimore though, to cover the spread. Huntley or Lamar, I'm fine either way. Offense really looks the same. Yeah, I'm going to highlight the, uh, the system we built last week and called it the run and defend after a loss. As we dove deeper into the stats of the recent weeks, we've seen that, you know, good defensive stats, some good rushing stats have been really telling for the last couple of years and this year especially, and that coming off a loss filter has been profitable, um, especially for underdogs. So this week, that system really likes only one game at the moment. It's Jacksonville plus three and a half at Tennessee. I see that in a few different systems as well that I built. Um, Baltimore, I'm going to agree with you there. Plus three at Pittsburgh. The thing about the Ravens offense, as good as Lamar is, it doesn't really change when Huntley comes in. It's the same offense. He has a similar skill set. I'm not going to say he's as talented as Lamar, but he can run the same offense. He can make the throws. He has the run plays in him. He has the legs, and he's been in it before, and he's been put in this situation. I don't think it's that big of a gap. And if the Ravens want to be a competitive team and make the playoffs, Cincinnati's breathing down their necks. I know they want that home playoff game. you got to go to Pittsburgh and get a win. So Ravens plus three there. Another one that's interesting is the Jets, um, the defensive pressure strategy, again, taking into account defense and hurrying the quarterback. Let's see. So so this strategy put in forced fumbles, hurries, and quarterback hits. It likes the Jets. Right now they're plus 9.5 in Buffalo. They've been playing better with Mike White. I think that game's going to be a little bit closer, fighting, uh, fighting for their lives now. So the Jets, the Ravens, and the Jaguars right now are three games that I like. We'll probably look at it a little more as we get closer to Sunday, maybe make a day of bet depending on how the odds shift. But those are my top three right now. Um, A few other games are populating, but want to see how the lines shift before then. Absolutely. I think I I like that Jets matchup as well. You know, riding with that defensive pressure strategy has been pretty hot recently. I think I think I'm going to double down on that one as well. Yeah, and just to give you a little bit of data behind that, so for the defensive pressure strategy, since 2014, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Since 20, 2022, so this season, for heavy underdogs, it's hitting at 63%, 17 and 10. If you bet 20 bucks per game, you'd have over 100 bucks in your pocket. We know if you add up that unit size, it's going to get bigger um, as well. So that one's hitting there, and then the run and defend after a loss system, crushing it. Uh, since 2019, it's hitting at 63% as well, 20, 74, 41, and 2, a 22% return on your investment. Those are huge numbers. So, you know, have the, when you have the data to back up those picks, that's where you feel confident in throwing that money down. I'm excited for a successful week 14, and uh, you should hop on AlloySports.com, see the systems we're building, putting out the data, the analytics to, to win you more picks, and that's what it's all about. So. Hope you have a great rest of your week. Enjoy football this coming weekend, and good luck on all your bets.